Well, how well are Chinese auto brands doing in the rest of the world? Jack Bukowski joins me now live from Atlanta to help us find out. He's the managing partner of JFP Holdings. Thank you for being with us, Jack. My pleasure, Rochelle. Now, as we heard there, Chinese brands are gaining some momentum in Australia, but how recognizable are Chinese auto brands globally? Well, they're not really recognizable in the United States, for example, maybe a little more so in Europe, because the European standards are are closer to where China is today. Or, you know, China's auto industry tends to, to follow Europe standards, uh, you know, more so than the U.S. So basically, in, in the United States, uh, you know, very few consumers would, you know, would be, uh, you know, they'd be pressed to, uh, to name one Chinese brand. So why is the momentum so slow? And how can Chinese brands make more headway then in Europe and the U.S.? Well, the, the, you know, the, the reason why, that, you know, it's been slow is because the certification requirements are very difficult. The United States crash testing, uh, you know, having to have advanced airbags, which are not required in China, or big items. Also, uh, the, you know, there's a whole distribution question. If you want to sell in a country, you have to have distribution. And building a dealer network is very, you know, very difficult. So there are some very real barriers to, uh, to the Chinese companies coming into the, uh, you know, very uh, mature markets. You know, nonetheless, they all would like to do that. That's one of their goals, because if they can sell in the United States or if they can sell in Europe, that gives them tremendous credibility everywhere, including in China. Now, one thing that we're seeing is a number of foreign car manufacturers either setting up their own plants or partnering with Chinese companies. How is that impacting the competitiveness of Chinese car brands? Well, first of all, uh, in China, a foreign company has to have a partner, and a foreign company is limited to 50% ownership of an assembly uh, joint venture. So that's required. You know, what that has done is that has really enabled the Chinese companies to really get into this business. Because, you know, basically prior to about 1995, 1996, there really was no car industry in China. And there were no local players that knew how to make cars. And so by partnering with the foreign companies, you know, they have learned a lot over the last uh, 20 years. So that has made them, uh, you know, more competitive. And now uh, every, you know, Chinese company that has a, a foreign partner is now building their own brands. And so the know-how and, you know, and the things they learned from their foreign partner are now helping them to be more competitive in the marketplace. Now, we're also seeing companies like BYD, who've really been the front runners in developing new energy vehicles or autonomous driving cars. And even web services company Baidu is also expanding its car technology offerings. What sort of edge do you think these trends could give Chinese brands over their rivals? Well, no, there are some very important trends that are going to favor Chinese companies. Uh, you know, and basically, the whole electrification of the auto industry is something that will benefit them. And China is now the clear leader in electric vehicles. And so, uh, you know, so Chinese companies like BYD and others that have come out with electric vehicles are basically you know, going to have a big advantage. Electric vehicles are key to a couple of other trends, which you know, one is uh, autonomous driving, which is really a logical extension of being electric. And you really have to have an electric vehicle to have autonomous driving. The second area is connectivity. I mean, basically, companies like Baidu and so forth look at the car as just another platform, another way to sell content, just like your smartphone or your smart tablet. So Chinese, you know, because of the fact that China is not only the largest car industry, right. but it's also the largest internet industry, you know, that gives Chinese companies an enormous advantage. To, you know, and that's why you see companies like Baidu with a tremendous subscriber base, tremendous content, getting into the auto business. Now, one place that Chinese brands may not see an advantage is in the U.S. How do you see U.S. President Trump's domestic auto factory push affecting Chinese brands and their strategies to enter the market? Now, that really shouldn't be an issue. I mean, basically, if, you know, BYD, for example, is selling buses in the United States, electric buses, and they've set up a plant in uh, California. So anybody that's really serious about entering the, you know, the U.S. market will end up setting up factories. So it'll actually be, you know, something that they'll benefit from the emphasis on, on U.S. factories. You know, the other factor is that I, I can't think of a single Chinese car that's being sold in the United States, being exported from China. So it really doesn't have 
an impact on, uh, on Chinese brands. And like I said, if they want to enter the, the U.S. market, then what they're going to do is they're going to set up a factory, most likely. All right, we'll have to leave it there. But thank you so much, Jack Pakowski, Managing Partner for JFP Holdings.